Hi guys, welcome back to the Brushmaster Studio. I set myself a little painting challenge this week, and that's to paint this miniature in six hours. So the challenge is simple guys. I've got six hours to paint this wonderful miniature who is L'Oreal Softvale, the Druid, and she's from Miniatures of Madness. And I've stuck the link in the description down below, so go and check her out and check out their tribe. They do some wonderful stuff. So let's head over onto the workbench and let's see how we do. So getting underway guys, as you can see, I've primed her in the Amethyst Blue from Arcus Hobby. Now getting into the skin, I made a mix up of Brick Red and Mahogany with a touch of Sunny Skin Tone. I wanted this to be a fairly neutral, more a sort of pinky yellowy type of skin. And I'm focusing on here on building up the main mid-tones um, in the areas where I think there's going to be the most light. And here I'm just, I'm just trying to blend that skin tone into my amethyst blue uh, prime, or my underpainting as you could call it. And I've literally just mixed a slightly darker variant of this skin colour by mainly uh, brick red and mahogany which is sort of an in-between color for me, and it blends nicely into that amethyst blue. So further highlights are added here by adding more sunny skin tone into that original mid-tone mix. And again here, I'm just trying to paint that smaller area of highlight where, where I feel that the light is gonna hit the most, I'm just trying to emphasize those areas. And to finish the skin off here, I, I wanted to put a little bit more of a redder tone into the skin. So I've got a glaze of brick red here and I'm just literally just adding it into areas which I feel need a little bit more color. Um, and this is always one of the things with skin. When, you, when you're mixing in white base colors as sunny skin tone is, Tend to, you tend to lose a lot of the color in the mid-tone. So I'm just glaze, glazing some of that color back here just to try and um, make, make the skin look a little bit more vibrant. Ah, a little bit too much time on the skin, I think. So I've mixed up, my initial mix here is gray blue and mud brown. Now this, this makes a sort of really nice off white, off bluish white, which I really like for white colors. It's not quite as stark as, you know, real harsh white, um, but I love painting white this way. So as you can see here, the first layers, I'm really pushing just to highlight the areas which are gonna be most in light. And I wanna leave plenty of that amethyst blue showing so we get some nice contrast on this shirt. And as I progress through painting the shirt, I'm literally just adding more and more ivory to the mix. And if you haven't done already, guys, don't forget to subscribe and hit that thumbs up button. This really helps the channel. And to finish the shirt off, I mixed up a glaze of that last mix, which was a lot of ivory in that original mix. And I'm just glazing over this. So you saw how the mix was on my thumb there. I'm just pushing this paint from the mid-tone and the shadow area into the highlight. So doing something like this is really different for me, guys, because I'm normally taking sort of 12 to 20 hours on a miniature like this. So I really have to try and find ways to cut corners, which with the skin, I probably didn't do. I, I think I took too long over the skin and her shirt. So I'm a bit behind the eight ball now. So. Let's, let's see if I can, I can catch up. Right, on to painting the bodice now, guys. So the first paint I'm putting on here is just straight whole red. 
And I'm pushing the paint to areas, as you can see, where I think most of the light is going to catch, like on the top of her hip here. Um, and as I progress through this, I try to add orangey tone to this mix. So the first highlight I'm adding here, that it's, I've added in cadmium red, which is it's a lovely deep dark orangey color. And I push this even further and further into those highlight areas where, where I think the light is going to catch the most. The final part of the bodice is just to add these little stitches in, which is whole red and a bit of the pale yellow to make a sort of parchmenty type color. Paint in the pants, guys. So the first mix I've got here is I've mixed some whole red into matte red. So as you can see here, I'm using this whole red quite a bit because it's just such a good color and it's got great coverage. But I obviously want a different tone to what I painted the bodice. So this time I'm adding more of a red tone into this first mid-tone mix. Um, and I'm just trying to focus there on getting all the main areas of light. As you can see, I've left quite a lot of the amethyst blue in areas which I consider are going to be shadow areas. And here I've mixed that mix in with a bit of the amethyst blue and got like a 50-50 mix. And I'm just carefully blending into that amethyst blue. Uh, the next highlight is added here with more cadmium red. Um, and that's all I really do now with the rest of these pants. I just keep adding more cadmium red, doing a little blend where I need to, but just building up to that orangey tone. One of the things I did find here was because I, I left such big patches of shadow, um, as you can see me doing the final highlights here, the pants took a lot of time to blend. So I think there's a lesson to be learned there for me is to try and sort of minimize those big areas of shadow if I want to paint quickly. Right, a simple bit now, guys. So painting the leaves, um, I've used the mid-tone color here of just pure olive green. And all I've done with this is just, I just add more and more pistachio to lighten up the highlights. So, painting the cape, guys. Um, I started off with AK Dark Green here, um, just as it is, and I'm just using the first layer to really establish where the light are. And what you can see here is I've mixed that dark green in with the amethyst blue for blending. Um, then I go on to deep green here as my sort of middle highlight, where which is a lovely saturated color you get a really nice tone with this deep green and the final highlight i put on here was light green and then i just go around the edges and add a little edge highlight all the way around the cloak On to the hair guys, and the first mix here is whole red with a little bit of cadmium, uh, matte red mixed into it. Um, so I paint the majority of the hair with this color and I just leave the amethyst blue in the very darkest areas. When I highlight this up, as you'll see in a second, I'm, first of all, I just add more and more cadmium red just to build up more of an orange tone here. So, and I'm focusing now on the areas of hair that are pointing upwards. And I'm still painting it sort of quite as clumps of hair, more as just individual hairs. Um, when we paint hair, we look for those little shine spots through the hair, which we then highlight up, sort of similar to NMM in a way. Um, and what you do is, as you highlight up, as you get lighter, the brush strokes get thinner and thinner. So as you can see here, I'm adding in, or I think I've added in pale yellow here to lighten it up even more. And the strokes just get thinner and thinner the more we paint. So more highlights now, and 
I've, I've just got more and more pale yellow being added into this orange tone. Um, and this tone here, I'm almost up to pure pale yellow now. As you can see, I'm, I'm painting very small little brush strokes along the main shine of the hair areas. And the last touch here is I've mixed up a glaze, as you can see on my thumb here, um, which is almost the last mix I used uh, with a little bit of the cadmium red in it. And I'm just glazing back into the highlights, pushing, pushing that orange tone in there a lot more. I just felt it got a little bit washed out with the whiter tones. So I'm officially starting to panic now, guys. I'm looking at my clock and I've got very little time left. And I've still got a couple of elements to paint. So I, I don't know how I'm gonna get this done in time. Right, on to the staff. I'm, getting very worried about the time here so I try to paint this as quickly as I can the wood I gave a basic sort of mid-tone of mahogany brown here um, and for the highlight I just very simply added in a little bit of the pale yellow just to give a very simple highlight there's not a lot of it it doesn't need a lot of work the wood um, but when we get to the vines I want to try and make them stand out a little bit more with a bit of a brighter green so the vines I start with pure deep green because it's a really nice bright saturated green. So I literally just paint a mid-tone over those all the way around them. They took me a little while to do actually. And I highlighted it up quite brightly with pale yellow uh, mixed into the deep green. Now for the crystal at the top of the staff, I first went with a straight brick red and I tried to paint all the sort of little edges and around the edges and put some little what you know you'd call hot spots um, into this but I was so conscious of the time here I was really rushing and panicking so this this is probably the weakest element of the model I felt I, I just didn't really get it to look how I wanted to but because I was so short of time, I just couldn't mess with it too much. And I just added more and more pale yellow to that to lighten it up. And then right at the end here, I'm just glazing over with the brick red to try and smooth everything out. So on to the base now, guys. So this is how I like to do a lot of base work, really, is to wet blend the first colours in. And I've got King Purple from Arcos, uh, Medium Rust and Mud Brown. And I literally just put a color on, then put another color on and blend them together. And I just keep moving them around and pushing the paint and, until I get to a point where I think, yeah, I quite like that. Or I need a little bit more purple here, a little bit more orangey tone here. Um, but when it's finished, you get a really nice blended, colorful base. So the first steps I took in painting these little rocks and slabs is I, I got them, I mixed all those colors together and added a little bit of green sky and got this sort of greeny gray uh, tone, which I could use for all the outlines and all the little parts of the rocks. Now I just carry on building up and building up and I paint it very loose. You see a lot of brush strokes here which I, I actually quite like in stone and rock. I don't like it to be all hyper smooth and things like that. Not until I get to the end when I try to smooth it out. And here you can see I've added more green sky into the mix and I start highlighting these stones more to the front as if the light is catching the front of these rocks. Um, and this gives it a really nice effect as I, I sort of try and, and build tones up. Disaster, guys. That is the point when I reach the six hour mark. So I didn't complete the challenge, not in time anyway. But I carried on painting the mini just to sort of see roughly how long I would take. Um, so the next steps here is I'm, I'm literally just blending in those colors. I got an in-between tone of the mid-tone and the base color and the highlight tones. And I just, 
it, it, I mix it down into a glaze and then I just push it towards the lighter areas. And as you can see, it starts to smooth things out and makes them look a little bit more, you know, like stones and flat cobbles or rocks or whatever we want them to be. So this is where I got to at the end of this stage, guys. And for the eagle-eyed monk, amongst you, you will also notice I actually forgot to paint a couple of elements. I forgot to paint her buckle and her little earring. So all in all, I think with the extra little bit of work I did and finishing the base, I took about another 30 minutes. So the whole miniature was done in about six hours and 30 minutes, which I'm still pleased with, but unfortunately I failed the challenge. So here is the final version of the model that I did, guys, after finishing those last couple of bits up. Not my best work, but it was great fun and I really enjoyed the challenge of putting myself under pressure. And I'm going to do this again soon and I'm going to beat the six hours. Thanks for watching guys and I hope to see you next time for another Brushmaster video. As you can see in the video guys, I'm using quite a unique painting handle. Um, and this is something of my own design, which I've been developing for the last sort of six to 12 months now. Um, it, it's the most comfortable and practical handle I've ever used. And I'm, I'm in the process of final design now and actually working with uh, a friend of mine in America to produce these. So keep a lookout in my socials, on my YouTube. The handle is gonna be coming up for purchase very soon.